is up, guys? Mark here, and it's time for episode 10 of Unboxing the 1976 Christopher Rhodes Time Capsule. Today, we'll be looking at items from Steve Engel's project about the Colonial Glassmakers. Welcome back again for episode 10. If you're not subscribed yet, then go ahead and take care of that now. Just click the watermark in the bottom corner or the red button under the video. Be sure to click the bell so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video and it won't just get lost in your feed. I'm so thankful to all of you who are continuing to watch and even more thankful when you become a subscriber too. If you're new to the series, you'll need to catch up first, so click the doohickey for a link to the playlist. Once you're caught up, don't forget there'll be more new episodes every Wednesday through April 1st, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And you can also find and follow me at Mark Berm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So today we're looking at Steve Engel's items from his project on the Colonial Glassmakers. As usual, most of this portion of the video will be in time-lapse, though I may slow it down if there's anything particularly interesting or important to say. Then, once everything's been opened, we'll show plenty of pictures during the closing while we listen to Steve present this project. Well, let's get to it! Thank you. 
that's a wrap on number 10. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider supporting the channel by subscribing. And most importantly, I want to hear from you. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Remember to follow me on social media at Mark Berm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'll see you next time. My name is Steven Engel and the Colony Craftsman. I'm going to talk about the glassmakers. America's first factory was a glass house founded in 1608 by a group of English gentlemen. They were sent here by the London Company and James I of England to start a glass house using the raw materials found here. They wanted to make glass cheaply and ship it back to England. The first factory closed in 1609 because there was not enough laborers or workers plus the need of glass in New America was not a necessity. In 1621 the second glass house in Jamestown was started. This time they decided to make colored glass beads for trade with the Indians. Again, it was not successful and closed in 1624. Now, 115 years later, 1739, the making of glass started again in America. Casper Wister started his factory in New Jersey. He made glass like they did in Jamestown, and it was called soda lime glass. It was dark, not clear, sounded dull when struck, and inexpensive to make. Then in 1765, Henry Striegel founded a new way of making clear light glass. This was called flint glass. It was light, clear, sounded like a bell when struck, but very expensive to make. To make a glass object, usually four men are involved. A mixer, fireman, and assistant gatherer, and a master grapher. The fireman first prepares the furnace with a roaring fire. Then, then the mixer gathers the ingredients and puts them in a clay pot. He, he gives this to the assistant gatherer. The mixture is melted or fused into a batch of hot white liquid. Now the assistant with a blowpipe scoops up the hot liquid to be formed. Two methods can be used. The gaffer can blow a glass bubble and shape it by hand or blow a glass bubble into a mold. Two shoes by a glass maker were a blowpipe, bottle door, which is a wooden paddle used for flattening pucellars of uh, tongs used for twisting, shears for cutting, and pincers for squeezing. Colonial glassmakers were very sk skilled craftsmen. They were able to improve the methods and think of new ways to make better glass. They created elegant 
Plus, we are and begin a tradition of craftsmanship that is still with us today. Please stop the tape recorder. Don't let it run out. Thank you.